Kadautu'u tamayai ki he ono mahina oi ta'u oi wafe uataha. I want to say welcome everyone to this program, but before we begin and continue on, let's turn to God in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for today. It's another day to let your name be glorified in everything that we do or say. We acknowledge, Father God, that you are our creator. We acknowledge your presence in our midst today. And we ask that your Holy Spirit continue to guide us, to direct us, Father, into the path that you want us to go and in the message that you want us to share tonight. Let your name be glorified. And let your name, Father God, be praised forevermore. To those, Father, who tune in with me tonight, I pray, Lord, that you will meet them with their every needs and more than abundantly. Direct them and touch them in a special way. Let your Holy Spirit minister to each and every one of them according to their needs in the name of Jesus. The rest of tonight, have it your way, and let your name be glorified. We give you back the glory. We give you back the praise. Because you deserve it all. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome, my loyal lady, Talo Falava. Pura vinaka, yorona, tiaora, and niha. It's Wednesday, the 9th of June, 2021. Time flies so fast. And we are in the middle of the year of 2021. And soon, we will welcome 2022. So please, to spend your time wisely. Amen. Once again, welcome back, and it's our dinner time program here in Auckland, New Zealand. Either you are with us here in the studio, or you're watching online. I hope that the message that we bring for you tonight will bring comfort to your soul and lift the burden of all. Not forgetting those who will tune in later. I welcome you in the name of Jesus. And to extend my gratitude to the Ministry of Elohim Broadcasting for the opportunity which they allow us to use their platform to share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. May God continue to bless this ministry. Amen. Please do share the program because you never know what life we will touch or change when we share. I want to begin with these incredible words in the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4. And it says, draw me away, we will run after you. I will repeat myself. Draw me away, we will run after you. This verse should bring hope to the weary heart that say, Lord, how will my life? ever make a difference for your kingdom. I know that many of us are tired. Many of us are weary from the battle, both the one inside and the one opposing us from without. You hold in your hands a leather asking one more thing of you which you may feel incapable of performing 
and you say to yourself, I know what to do, but how to perform it is beyond my ability. And here is the good news. The good news is that you are in a good company. You have become one in heart and experience with Abraham experience with Sarah, Moses, Esther, Gideon, Hannah, not forgetting Elizabeth, and the Apostles Peter and Paul, just to name a few. And I think you get the point. My dear friend, God is not asking you and me to do something for him but rather to let him or allow him to do what only God can do through you and through me. Amen. And this kind of callings comes in our times of weaknesses rather than when we feel the strongest. What then does God require of you and of me? I think Mary said it best in the book of Luke chapter 1 and verse 38. Let it be to me according to your word. In other words, Mary is saying, Lord, whatever you say, let it come to pass upon my life. So, whenever you find yourself, my friend, doubting how far you can go, just remember, just remember how far you have come. Remember everything that you have Remember all the battles you have won and all the fears you have overcome. Keep this in mind. Hardship often prepare ordinary people for extraordinary destiny. So this evening, take a deep breath and say to yourself, it's just a bad day, not a bad life. I will ask the technician to play us a song before we continue on. Hallelujah.
coming now. Welcome back. In the book of John, chapter 10 and verse 10, Jesus said, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundant. There is a conflict going on, a war in the heavenlies. And people who live in godlessness unwittingly become bonds of it. Their hearts are open to darkness and they begin to move their hand against what they know is dearest to the heart of God. For example, in the book of Esther, we read of a man called Haman who worked his way up in the government to virtually second in authority. He wanted everybody to bow before him. He wanted everybody to bow to his view of what society should look like. However, a certain group was represented by one man at the gate named Mordecai, a devout follower of God. Haman became inflamed against Mordecai and all the Jews he represented. And Haman persuaded the king to pass laws with the ultimate goal to erase the society of these people from the face of these earth. And I want to bring another story that's similar to the stories of Mordecai. In the book of Daniel 6, verse 125, it's a similar story, but I want to read it. King Tellius was the king of the Medes. He had divided his kingdom into 120 states and appointed three men to rule over them. One of these three men was Daniel, who worshipped and prayed to God every single day. Over time, God allowed Daniel to prosper and soon King Tellius planned to make Daniel in charge of the entire empire. The other two advisors were unhappy about this. So the two advisors tried to find some law that Daniel is breaking so that he does not get any more power over the land. But Daniel is a very faithful and responsible leader. They find nothing against Daniel. So they come up with another plan that they should charge him over a religious law. He always pray to his God, they say. So let's make a law ordering everyone in the empire to pray to King Talos instead. So the two advisor went to the king and explained their idea to him. For their plan that he should enact a law that orders everyone to pray to you and forbids people from praying to other gods and if 
other people pray to other gods, they should be put in the lion's den for night. And to the king ears, it was sounds very good law. It was sounds like a good law. And the king signed. Now, so what is God responds to this? We ask that many times when we go through trials, when an issue arising in our lives, we sometimes we ask, where are you, God? Why didn't you take me out of this problem? Why didn't you stop the trouble coming my way? And we ask many times. And I remember the story of Martha, Mary and their brother Lazarus. And when she said, Lord, if only you would have been here, my brother will not die. And you see, what is God responds to this? Let's continue on. The Apostle Paul said in the book of 1 Corinthians 1 verse 26 to 28. It reads that God takes the weak. He takes the foolish. And the things that are not. To bring to nothing the things that stand in their own wisdom and strength. And in this case... God had pro, pro, providently placed a young Jewish girl named Esther in the king's palace. And when God called Esther to go in and make intercession for her people, it happened to be at the worst possible time in her life. The passion of the first Romans with the king had somewhat faded. And she had not even been called into his presence for 30 days. Perhaps she felt unlovely or feared that she had somehow failed to be faithful to the king. And now he was disp displeased with her. And don't we all love God's timing? And as we look at the church in our community today, who among us can say that we are all we should be? Our churches are virtually prayerless. Our gospel is light and somewhat treacherous. Or if not, it is heavy fisted condemning the righteous. Just like Esther, we might conclude, oh God, this is the worst possible time to experience this onslaught of evil that we are facing today. We are not strong. We feel like we have in the presence of the King and we are completely aware of our failings and our inability to do what you are calling us to do. Nevertheless, God has died the moving of his hand in with our voices. You see, the incredible mercy and kindness of God displayed 
is that he waits to hear us in our frailty. That means that there is one thing that we must rediscover. The thing that Esther had to know despite how she felt about herself. That she was still the bride of the king. So no matter how you feel about yourself, even if you have been away from God for years, it does not matter. Because Isaiah 49 verse 16 says that God has engraved you on the path of his hands. Hallelujah. Esther is a type of a praying people, the ones to whom God looks in order to display his power once again. In her own frailty, Esther turned to a complete dependency upon God. Calling together her friends to pray and fast for three days. Esther knew that this would not be accomplished through petition or activism. What needed to be done in the nation was only going to happen by the hand of the Almighty God. And so, she essentially concluded, as the 4, verse 16 said, Not only will we fast, but I am going to throw myself in with my friend. And I am going to go in to the king. And whatever it costs me, that is what it cost. Similarly, it is not a casual prayer that the Lord is looking for in our generation, but rather people who are willing to say, God, I accept whatever you have for my future. God, I accept Whatever you ask me to do, I will do it. And if I perish, I perish. You see, the scripture tell us that on the third day of fasting, Esther put on her royal robe and stood in the inner court of the king's palace. Across from the king's house, while the king sat on his royal, on his royal throne, in the royal house, facing the entrance of the house. And so it was. When the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, that she found favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther went near and touched the top of the scepter. Let me remind you this evening that it's not about how you feel about yourself that matters. Let me repeat it again. 
let me remind you this evening that it's not about how you feel about yourself that matters, but rather how the king feels about you that matter the most. Amen. You can walk into that court of prayer. Feels like that you amount to nothing. You can walk into that court of prayer. Feels like that you are a disappointed. Only to discover the king has been waiting for you. Only to discover that you are the apple of his eyes. Only to discover that he has been longing to hear your voice. Only to discover that he's not ashamed of you. Because he bought you with his own precious blood. So when Esther touched the top of the king's scepter, she recognized the king's power. Esther recognized the king's mercy, as well as her position in that court. Likewise, you and I must again recognize the power of our Savior and know that in Him we are more than conquerors. Know that in Him we can do all things. We'll, we will go for another break and then we will continue on.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome back. Let's continue on. In Esther 5, verse 3, the king said to Haman, What do you wish, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given to you up to the half of my kingdom. Esther gave an unusual answer. If it were me, I probably would have just gone for the throat of the matter and explained that Haman was trying to kill my people. But Esther spoke with wisdom. In Esther 5 verse 4, it says, If it pleases the king, let the king and Haman come today to the banquet that I have prepared for him. Remember, for him. I find it very much interesting that Esther is inviting two people, but she is intimating the banquet is only for him. Assuming it is the king she's referring to. And this is a picture of how our first ministry is not merely to be coming to him with the list of our needs. We must not forget to take time to just to thank him and love him. Hallelujah. And now a time of a second request comes. A second banquet. All oh, the banquet, the king at the banquet the king said to Esther, remember this is the second thing. And the king said to Esther, what is your petition? It shall be granted to you. And what is your request? Up to the half of my kingdom, it shall be done. Then Esther answered and said, my petition and request is this. If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet which I will prepare for them. Pause. Rewind, remember the first banquet was for him. And now the second banquet is for the two of them. This is just like the scripture that says in the Song of Solomon 2 in verse 4. And it's read, He brought me the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. Finally Esther fully knew that the king's heart was engaged with her voice. She understood that her relationship was not going back to where it used to be but it was going deeper than it have ever had been. In the beginning of her relationship with the king, it was a love relationship. And I have no doubt that he was infatuated with her and vice versa. Just as is often the case in our first love relationship with Christ. 
Yet over time, a distance came. The king was looking for something more. The king was looking for somebody with whom he could trust certain things of the kingdom. For we know at the end of the story, Esther was given the power to rewrite the law of death into a law of life. She literally became a gold regent writing laws with her husband. And on the second day at the banquet of wine, the king again said to Esther, what is your petition? What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted to you. And what is your request? Up to the heart of the kingdom, it shall be done. You can see a deep longing in the king's heart and the same way can you understand how much Jesus is waiting and longing for you and for me he is waiting for us as his people to come back into his presence to love him and recognize our calling on earth The Queen Esther answered and said, If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. For we have been sold, my people and I, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. Had we been sold as a male and female slaves, O oh king, I would have held my tongue. But although the enemy could never compensate for the king's loss, So King Ahasuerus answered and said to Queen Esther, Who is he and where is he? Who would dare presume in his heart to do such a thing? Who would dare? A fire comes into the king's eyes is because his bride has come back to him. His bride is ministering to him at the banqueting table. The one David said in the book of Psalm 23 and verse 5, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Can you imagine what will happen when we come back to the throne of God in our community, when we come back to the throne of God in our home? Who would dare presume in his heart to do such a thing? Who would dare to think that he can curse and eradicate the people I have pro proclaimed to be blessed in the earth and to be a blessing everywhere they go. Who would dare to raise his hand against my pride? The testimony of who I am in the earth. Esther said, 
to adversary. An enemy is this wicked Haman. So Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. The king arose in his wrath from the banquet of wine and went into the palace garden. But Haman stood before Queen Esther, bleeding for his life. For he saw that evil was determined against him by the king. Oh, hallelujah. When the king returned from the palace garden to the place of the banquet of wine, Haman had fallen across the couch where Esther was. Then the king said, Will he also assault? the queen while I am in the house. And as the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Now, Harpona, one of the unique, said to the king, Look, the colors, 50 cubits high, which Haman made for Mordecai, who spoke good on the king's behalf is standing at the house of Haman. Then the king said, hang him on it. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's wrath subsided. You see, Whatever the enemy means for harm to the people of God, God will turn it around. In the book of Psalm 37, verse 14 to 15, it says, The wicked draw the shore and bend the bow to bring down the poor and naked, to slay those whose ways are upright, but their souls will pierce their own hearts and their bow will be broken. Just as Esther discovered, you have more power than you realize. You are not just a sideline player in a society that is plunging in the darkness. You are the bride of the king, the ultimate authority. Rulers are in his hand. Laws are in his power and can be rewritten. We are living in a days where there are dex books that needs to be rewritten in our schools. Laws that need to be rewritten in our lives. There are things happening in the spiritual realm that God will give you the power to rewrite. And if we all start rewriting together, can you imagine what will happen in all facets of society? It reminds me of a song called Mercy Rewrote My Life. My mistakes got turned into miracles. Every tears was turned into joy. My sins are forgiven and a new name was written when mercy rewrote my life. We can live to see a spiritual awakening in our day. And so it is time for you and for me to pray 
for our home. It is time for us to lift up our nation before God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here with us. I pray, Lord, that you bless those who listen, bless those who tune in later. Whatever their needs might be, I know that you will meet them according to their needs, according to your riches and glory. For everything, Father, you hold in the balm of your hands. And all we need to do is come to you and receive them by faith. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the story of Esther that brings joy and peace. It encouraging us, Father, to stand no matter what comes our way. And Father God, thank you for everything that you have done so far. Give you back the glory. Give you back the praise for you deserve it all. And be with all of us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God see it. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in with me this evening. We will be back here at the same time, same place next week on the 16th of June 2021. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and keep you peace. And we said yes Lord we agree and we received your promises in Jesus' name. Bye for now. God bless.
soon.